People want to know about this Meek Mill, Benny Siegel writing for him. Oh, he, they said O'Malley now. It wasn't, I, didn't I tell y'all they was going to say that? It don't even matter, but y'all running out of holes to run into. Y'all like a mouse who can't dig another hole. You just keep running dead smack into the wall, trying to run around the edges, huh? Well, look. I don't care. <laughs> we don't care. We don't. I told you about this ghost writing thing and all that stuff. We don't care. We care about the finished product. Whatever we getting. Other than that, we really don't care. See, but the thing was, what Meek does is he basically steal from people. And then make songs. He'll steal their hooks and then come out and use the same hook and steal it from people. But other than that, we don't care. We really don't. Nobody cares about what Meek Mill does. But now, here's a picture and a photo from when Beans was in the studio with them. And he seems like from the video, I mean from the film, the photo, he's schooling or coaching Meek and doing the rhyme. In front of me, so me can get it and learn it and know how to spin it right. And there's nothing wrong with that to me. I don't really care to be like, yo, he gave me some tutelage. This is how people work. This is how art works. This is how comedians work. They'll have the story or joke, and somebody else will make a, a joke out of it. You ever been in a room, you telling a story? And you telling us, and then did y'all make fun or jokes around that story? That's how comedy works. And they'd be like, oh, my boy, he's assistant writer and all this. They'll just get credit for it. But the concept of the joke might come from the comedian. And everybody else, they're throwing stuff in, and it might be funny. Oh, man, I'm going to say that, too. That's funny. You know, so I don't get it. Like, why has everybody got to be for? I don't know. It's just, to me, it don't make any sense to be worried about who wrote the song and all this. It just makes him look like the hypocrite because he reacted off social media and went at Drake the way he did about ghost writing and writing a song and trying to destroy Drake with it when he's guilty of it, just like a lot of the other artists are. But there's some rappers who like to write themselves. Like a lot of people be like, oh man, we are talk about Nas, man. See, Nas had Dan's presidents and he had Justin Sunset. They was all writing for him. And I said, well, look, this is how it works, brother. They collaborated on a song and they'll have an idea. Nas can write his rhymes based on an idea. And that's why he normally don't have features on his songs unless they're in the studio and they know what's going on because if you look if you listen to songs like accident accidental murderers you just an accident murderer and then rick ross is on there you can tell rick ross was sent he sent in his verse to the music he wasn't in that studio because the verse he sent in does not go along with the song whatsoever. It just don't. Nas is telling a story about accidental murders. His verse don't even go with the theme of what's happening with the song. So it sounds out of place because it is out of place. This is the way Jay-Z and R. Kelly recorded Best of Both Worlds. And that's why it became Best of a Disaster. There's no continuity with any of the music. You know, and some of the songs you could tell was so incomplete. It had that gap space in there. Best work come from when people are in the studio together working. So it sounds collaborated. It sounds like a, a collective effort. Like when Wu-Tang record, all the group is in there and they all rhyme into the beat and they using things. The artist, they would borrow lines. It's called catching a line. I'll catch a line from him. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, I like what you said, but you should flip it to this. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, yeah, that's dope. I'm, I'll take that, then. That's better than my line. 
So I use that, put that with mine, and yeah, we got a dope. And the the whole concept is to come up with a dope sixteen or whatever you doing thirty two. So that's the that's the point of the whole thing. And then like, man, Wu Tang was so tight, so dope. Yeah, because you have all those creative minds in there working. Meek them could have benefited for having Benny Siegel or somebody around. I don't know how many times must I explain this to you. The history of rap. Everybody wrote their own raps. When? <laughs> the history of rap. What are you talking about? Curtis Blow was writing raps for people. You have DMC writing raps for people. People be like, yo, write me a joint. It was, man, what are you talking about? The Sugar Hill Gang and all them, they had one writer. Grandmaster Cass made a living off of writing for people. Big Daddy Kane made a living off of writing for people. It was going on throughout time. It was not frowned upon. Only during the modern era did it, like, this new 2000 age, when it's like, you got a ghostwriter. You don't write your own stuff. Telling you it's foolery. That's all it is, is just plain foolery. Y'all think that it's some major difference. They be like, man, when well, you get on Jay-Z for it, I get on him for song stealing. It's a different thing. You're biting people's minds. You you know, it's a whole different concept than ghost writing. Nobody's writing for Jay-Z. What he does is he takes your song and redo it. He's doing what Meek did, basically. And that's what's wrong. Meek don't even pay these people. He don't give them no feature. He don't give them no shout out. He don't give them no likes or nothing. He just take their stuff and be like, they too small to do something about it. That's wrong. Y'all don't get that? And all you little idiots from Philly, if y'all... Quit trying to defend me by just saying you riding another man's genitals. Is that your only defense? You can't, you don't have a thought. What's your defense to him doing that? Not one of you have addressed that. Why is he stealing songs from other people? Why is he stealing his rap style from other people? All y'all gonna say is no, he isn't. Then why does he have the same sound, the same words, same title as the other song? He didn't even have the decency to change the name of the song. Stealing from the underground. Cause they too small to do something about it. But y'all supposedly support rap and real hip hop, support that. It's wrong. Every day a star is born. Everybody they mama know. That's J. Cole's song. Come on. That's J. Cole's song. That's not Jay-Z. But what Jay does is be like, yo, I'm going to borrow that. And you know what I'm going to do because you're not out yet and you're not established. I'm going to put you on as like featuring J. Cole. You know, so people are going to be like, oh, who's J. Cole? And if my name's on it, it's going to become a hit. Because if you put it out right now, nobody's going to really give it any fire. But yeah, it's a dope concept. But if I say it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be even bigger because I'm from a different plateau. So I'm looking out of a different window. So I could talk about all these other people, you know, and clap for them. You know, they made it. You know, it's different for me. Well, you're coming from a, like a fan perspective. I'm coming from somebody who's at the top of the game, looking back through the window at these artists. You know, you know, it's just something. Let me know what you want to do. <laughs> you know, so he basically didn't have nothing to do but to go along with that plan. I mean, church in the wild. You think that's Jay Z, Church in the Wild? Come on. Lights off the lips of a priest. <laughs> Come on. 
Você quer em teu lugar Eu sou gato no Bolívar Eu não me lembro That's a Jay-Z song? Come on Let's be real Now That's just how it goes That's the part of the business that gets swept under the rug and whatever. While one guy gets mega rich and the other person that gets some money. With Jay, as far as being an original person, all his originality was gone after reasonable doubt. He was done. There was no more originality out of him. He became formulaic and everything else he had to borrow from somebody to get the style and you know and go from there. Because he was out of it. It's like I'm out of juice. That's why he was talking about retiring. He was gonna retire out of the volume too. He was like, I'm done. So there you go there. Now Let's continue with what we were talking about with the ghost riding situation. A lot of y'all look at it and say, oh wow, this, uh, this ghost riding thing is going out of hand and Meek writes his own rhymes. He don't need a ghost rider. See, this is the thing y'all don't understand. Y'all think like Meek Mill is still like he's broke in the crib and you know, he's hungry and he's got to go out and get it. He's got money now. Might be Nicky's, but he got it. He got money. So now you got money. You got cousins and people you're taking care of. You in Miami, you doing with Nicky. You're not in the studio like you used to be. 24-7 working. You're not sitting there with your crew talking about some, I'm hungry, I got to get this, how this sound. You know, they all got to kiss your butt. So ain't nobody going to tell you something suck. So you surrounded by a bunch of yes men because you got the money. So you the best thing in the world. And you feeling like the big man. But now, you don't even know what to say no more. Your rhyming then fell off. Because you're not surrounded by anybody that's dope no more. You're not surrounded by these LMC. You done burned a lot of bridges with people just by the beef you had with Drake. And on the low, you really want that beef squashed. But it can't get squashed because your mentality is messed up. See, I know what was said and why the beef didn't get squashed. Because you got too much stupidity and pride, you care about social media too much. And all y'all little Meek Mill fans, y'all can't even talk to him because he didn't cut y'all off too. Can't even go and text him or nothing on Instagram. That's what he think of y'all. You can't even say, hey man, congratulations, we supporting you. You fighting for a guy who ain't fighting for you. He said, you know what, I'm blocking all my comments. Why? You don't have thick skin? Well, it's obvious, right? He don't have thick skin. He's weak. Weak-minded person. Very shallow, female-ish. All these beefs he's been in, it's been over some real feminine stuff. Nothing solid. Another dude telling another guy Telling a girl that her boyfriend is out sleeping with somebody, that ain't a real that ain't on no level is that acceptable. Safari confirmed it. And y'all still in denial. Man, how do we know he did that? He did it. You went on FaceTime with Nikki and told her. What Safari was doing. That's foul. And yes, the West Philly people 
Yes, I got your messages. My goodness, I got like 12 West Philly messages. Yo, man, I just want to say, you know, look, I ain't going to hold you or nothing. I'm just saying, leave West Philly out this stuff, man. I'm serious. West Philly, we different. We don't even F with them North niggas. So, I guess West Philly don't mess with North niggas, you know, so... <laughs> I guess they wanted that to be known throughout the world. So there we go. No more West Philly emails. Thank you. <laughs> Gosh, uh, it's, it's crazy. Believe me, this whole weekend and the last five, six days have been nuts with emails and messages of all over the same subject or something else didn't happen. And now, Game then went and put out a video where he went to some projects in like Baltimore where uh, Freddie Gray was killed and gave some money to the kids and showed some love. And that's always cool. But he was there filming another part of his video and now Philly people talking about they want to beat up the biker dude and all like. He's one of y'all bikers, man. You know, leave him alone. He doing, I'm quite sure he got some money. Y'all weren't giving him any. Go pop a willy to that. You know, it's like, man, leave him alone. Y'all threatening to hurt him, man. That's all he's talking about. These dudes is, is, is ridiculous out here. Look, we went on this subject far too long. So, I'm going to end this video now, go get something to eat, and then I'm done for the day because I am not going to work. I'm not doing anything tomorrow, spending any money anywhere. It's total blackout, shut it down day 26. All the blacks are all in the greens. It's going down. And that's it. It's a dumb one. So if you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter, at Carcino. Instagram, at Carcino. BoxingSocialist.com is the website. The name is Carcino again, and I'm out. Love all you guys. Follow the playlist, too, on YouTube. Or just click the cards and go check them out. I'm gone.